Now that we know um, a bit about antibodies, a bit about immunoglobulins, let's look at these different isotopes in a lot more detail. So just recapping, there are five immunoglobulin isotopes based on the constant region of the antibody. These are IgM, IgD, IgG, IgE, and IgA. Now we will first, and of course they're designated Greek symbols as well. Here I'm drawing the bloodstream, just to prove, just to explain it better, I guess. Now we will first focus on IgG. Now IgG has a molecular weight of 150 kilodaltons. We are also focusing on IgG first because it is the main immunoglobulin in the blood, lymph, cerebrospinal flu fluid, and perineal fluid. It actually forms 15% of total serum proteins, which is a lot. And so they actually circulate in the blood as a monomer, as a single antibody. And they are the most abundant. And their half-life is about 23 days. Now, what's interesting about IgG, because it is abundant, it has many subclasses, and they differ in the length of the constant region of the heavy chain. These subclasses, as I mentioned earlier, is IgG1, 2, 3, and 4. And deficiencies in any of these cause, uh, is a sort of indicator of specific things, such as a deficiency in Ig, IgG4 implies allergy, easily being allergic. And to make this even more confusing, IgG2 can be further divided into IgG2A and IgG2B. Both have opposite effects. IgG2A is for promoting inflammation. IgG2B is for promoting antibody production. So now, let us see what IgG does in the body and how it helps the body fight infection, fight pathogens. And we're focusing on IgG also and its functions because some of the functions of IgG are shared by other um, antibody classes, such as IgM and IgD. So the first thing we'll look at is uh, what IgG does in the body is perform opsonization. And this is essentially when it coats a pathogen uh, so that the body can easily destroy it. So for example, here we have a bacteria and the bacteria contains antigens. The IgG antibody can bind onto the antigen of the bacteria through the Fab portion. And as it binds to the bacteria with the Fab portion, the FC portion is sticking out. And with the FC portion sticking out, the FC portion can be easily detected by phagocytes, such as a macrophage, because a macrophage have receptors for the FC portion of IgG. And so when it binds, the bacteria which is bound to the antibody, which is bound to the phagocyte, the phagocyte can easily engulf the bacteria, essentially. The second thing IgG can perform is what's called agglutination. And this is where it can essentially form precipitate. It can form soluble antigens that allows it to be more easily phagocytized. So what I think this means is that when you have a lot of bacteria circulating around, for example, the IgG can basically bind onto these different bacteria and bind onto each other, forming sort of a clump, a cluster. And so this allows the body to easily detect it and destroy all these uh, bacteria at once. The most important thing I think to take in about IgG is that it actually uh, works, um, it actually transfers to the, to the placenta because it is the only immunoglobulin that actually passes through the placenta, excluding IgG2. So what this means is that the mother, for example, has IgG antibodies for specific things. This um, immu immunity will pass on to the baby. And this is facilitated by the IgG receptor on the placenta, which, uh, ex which is expressed about three to four months into pregnancy. So it is the only antibody that is transferred to the baby from the mother. Another thing antibodies such as IgG can do is what's called antibody-dependent 
cell-mediated cytotoxicity. And this is sort of similar to oxidization in a way, in that if you have just cells, and then there is an abnormal cell amongst these cells, such as a tumor cell, the fab region can bind onto uh, specific things that are expressed by this tumor cell. And then it will obviously have the FC region sticking out. This will allow cells called natural killer cells to bind onto the FC region of the antibody and to realize that, that this is a tumor cell um, there. And so it will release cytotoxins to kill it. IgG also functions to neutralize toxins and it can neutralize uh, toxins such as um, tetanus, botulism, and snake and scorpion venom. IgG acts by attaching to active sites of the toxins, basically inactivating it. And because of this, in an event of an exposure, IgG is usually administered to neutralize uh, the venom, the toxin. And also, IgG works to neutralize viruses as well, and it binds to the viral epitopes, the antigens, and may prevent viral absorption and release. Another function, lastly, that I haven't mentioned and that I cannot actually fit in this diagram, which is extremely important, is that IgG is one of the antibodies that can activate complement. Complement is massive in that it protects, in that it stimulates an immune response. Um, and there's a video on complement. I have a video if you want to watch it. But essentially, IgG activates the classical pathway of complement. So that was for IgG, the properties and functions of IgG. However, some of the properties and functions of IgG are also shared with other immunoglobulin isotopes, such as IgM. And we'll look at IgM now. So IgM has a molecular weight of 900 kilodaltons, which is massive. It actually forms a pentameric structure in the bloodstream when it's, once it's secreted. And it's held together by disulfide bonds, officially called the J chain. So here we have the pentameric structure of IgM held together by the J chain. Interestingly enough, IgM is the first antibody to be produced and expressed following exposure to an infectious agent. Whereas IgG was the most abundant, IgM is the first to be produced. And it has a sh relatively short half-life, about five days. Because of IgM's pentameric structure, it makes it effective in activating complement and agglutination. Activating complement as in activating the classical pathway of complement. And agglutination, essentially, here we have a lot of bacteria. The IgM can form precipitates, uh, basically forming clumps of it together. However, IgM has poor toxic and viral neutralization, and it does not cross the placenta because remember IgG is the only antibody that crosses the placenta but even though IgG is the only antibody that crosses the placenta IgM is actually the first to be made and the only immunoglobin made by the fetus at five months. IgM also has isohemagglutinin activity which I will not explain what it is you just have to research that. Now let's look at IgD. IgD has a molecular weight of 180. It is not a secreted immunoglobulin, but it is a membrane-bound immunoglobulin. So for example, here we have B cells. The B cells and plasma cells, they can express IgD on the membranes. But also the B cell can express IgM. Because IgD is membrane-bound immunoglobulin, we would expect to find low concentrations of it in the serum, in the bloodstream. And also, IgD can be co-expressed on B cells. So the B cell, which has not become a plasma cell, can have both IgD and IgM. And so IgD seems to be a marker for B cell maturity. So here we have a B cell expressing both IgM and IgD. It's not a plasma cell yet. Remember, IgM is the first antibody to be expressed. IgD can be expressed, 
And if the B cell is IgD, it means it is more mature. However, the full function of IgD is still unknown. Next is IgE, which has a molecular weight of about 200 kilodaltons. It is secreted as a monomer, as a single antibody. It has a half-life of about two days, but the half-life can increase if IgE is bound onto mast cells or basophils. So for example, here we have IgE antibodies in the bloodstream, and here we have a mast cell. IgE, the FC portion, can bind onto uh, receptors on the mast cells, and this will increase the half-life of IgE. IgE, however, does not agglutinate and does not fix complement. So as I mentioned, IgE has high affinity, well, it has, it has high affinity for mast cells and basophils, which allows, it, which allows its half-life to be increased to about two weeks. So here we have a mast cell, and the mast cell um, has special receptors called FC epsilon receptors, which are for IgE antibodies. And when it binds to these, the IgE can actually then bind onto antigens of pathogens. And when it does this, it will stimulate the mast cell to release its granules containing histamine. Histamine is an inflammatory mediator which is important in the hypersensitivity reaction. Interestingly enough, this mechanism is what we see in allergic reactions when there, there is histamine being released by mast cells. The last antibody class I want to talk about is IgA, which has a molecular weight of about 165 kilodaltons. It can be secreted as, as a monomer, single antibody, or as a dimer, particularly in the mucosal system. And therefore, IgA is important in the respiratory tract, the genital tract, and the gut, the mucosal system. So here in the blood, we can have IgA monomer or IgA dimer. If it's in a dimeric form, it is held together by what's called the J chain. And remember, the J chain is what we saw at IgM. It has a half-life of about 5.5 uh, days. And it is the main immunoglobulin in the mucus, so in the respiratory tract, the gut, and the vaginal penis area. Now, there are two subclasses of IgA. There's IgA1, which makes up 93% of all IgAs, and there's IgA2, which makes up 7% of all IgAs. And as I mentioned, it is the main immunoglobulin in the mucus, in the mucosal system. And so has the primary defense against mucosal infections such as HIV and Helicobacter pylori and Strep pneumonia which in, uh, attacks the lungs. IgA does not fix complement, activate complement, because we don't want an inflammatory response occurring in the mucosal tract. It does, however, have agglutination and antiviral capacity, and it must have antiviral capacity because there are many viruses that enter the body through the mucosal system. So that was for IgA. I actually forgot to mention something about IgE in that IgE has a function uh, in that it, per it has a, some form of function in protection against parasites such as worms. So that concludes the video on immunoglobulins. As a summary, IgM is the first antibody to be expressed, produced. IgD is a membrane-bound antibody. IgG is the most abundant uh, antibody in the blood and has and does the, most fun does the most things in the body in terms of protection. IgE uh, has, uh, um, stimulates hy the hypersensitivity reaction, allergic reaction, and IgA is the most abundant uh, immunoglobulin in the mucosal system. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it.